Greetings, everyone. I'm reporting to you live from the freezing tundra known as Austin, Texas. Temperatures are literally below freezing, and it will probably be a week before we see temperatures rise to freezing. So this is just ridiculous. I moved to Texas to escape the cold, so I am not a happy camper. But thank goodness for my stash because I've been curled up on my chair, drinking tea and knitting away. Speaking of stash, I've been talking a lot about it, but I really haven't shown much evidence that I've done anything with it. So today I'm going to share with you the projects I'm working on. Hi, I'm Lynn. Welcome to my channel. Join me on my journey as I sew, knit, and craft my way through my stash, exploring creative possibilities and stretching my imagination to fulfill my stash's potential and bring it to life. Now, I like having more than one project going on at a time, but I've gone a little overboard and have more than I'm really comfortable with, so I'm trying to finish some of them up before I start anything new. So let's get to it. Many of these projects I consider mindless, something to keep my hands busy. They don't require a whole lot of mental energy or concentration. And let's face it, we're almost a year into a pandemic where we've had to quarantine and socially distance ourselves. So yeah, I'm a little low on the mental energy aspect. So these projects are coming in handy. Let's start with an update on my half triangle quilt. Now this is specifically to use up smaller pieces of quilting cottons that I have. And I showed you a stack of fabrics that I pulled in a previous video. And I spent most of last, that, last Saturday ironing them. And I've been cutting them out whenever I have an extra couple of minutes or need a break from the computer. It will be a queen size quilt, I've decided, and I will donate it to the nonprofit that I work for. I figured out that the finished squares will be about three inches and I'll need almost 1300 squares. Now that sounds like a lot, but actually it won't be a problem. And as you can see, let me show you here what I've got. Get my stashes, stacks I should say. So I've already got a fair amount of fabrics cut out. There's over a hundred different kind of fabrics here. And, you know, if you have a hundred, what do you need? You need about 10 of each or I have so yeah, maybe, well, that will give you a thousand. You'll still need 300 more. But anyway, math, you know. Anyway, the point is I have a lot already cut out. So I'm feeling good about the progress that I'm making on this project. I'm really in no hurry to get it done. I suspect that it's probably going to take me a couple of months to do so. And that's fine. I'm okay with that. Now the next project that I have is a blanket that I'm working on. And let me, let me see if I can, I can get it here for you. Um, get the squares. It's done in squares. This is a pattern that I got free from Yarnspirations and I'll link, um, I'll link the pattern down below. So these, this is how many squares I have. I ha actually have 12 completed and these are what they, whoopsie, I'm getting all tangled up. Stop it. And these, this is what they look like. Now they're made I altered the pattern a little bit because all of the squares should also have a border on it that is the same color to kind of create some consistency throughout the pattern, but I just don't have enough um, of one color to do that. So I just skipped that and I've made it the four colors. And in actuality, as I get down through my yarn, I'm ending up with these little balls. So the last couple of squares will probably have multiple colors in them because I just don't have enough, especially for these outer, these last two rows of colors or last two blocks of colors, these last 24 rows, because each, each color is 12 rows. And the further you get out in the block, obviously you're using up more yarn. So as I'm making my way through the yarns that I do have, 
I'm not going to have enough probably to do all the squares in four colors. So I'll have some squares interspersed in there that have multiple colors, which I think will just make it more fun. It will use up the, it will use up the yarn. And as I said before, this is made with acrylic weight yarn. And while it's not good for any type of garment knitting, and it is hard on my hands, but it is perfect for blankets. And this is the fourth one that I've made using this pattern. And let me show you, I actually have the first blanket that I ever made. So this, this I can't consider part of my stash anymore because I made this about two years ago. But this is what the actual pet looks like when it's all put together. And I got this yarn, it was came as a kit and I bought it at the thrift store because somebody obviously didn't want to knit up the kit. It was originally for a ripple afghan. And in the kit were the golds and I believe the yellow was also part of it. So there were three shades of gold and then the yellow. And this was a sport weight yarn. And I also happen to have in my stash a white sport weight, this dark blue, or, or this is kind of a Wedgwood blue, and then this light blue. So I decided to add them in the mix. And I think adding the blues really freshened up the color scheme of this because all golds kind of gave off a 70s vibe. So the blue, I think, really lightened it up and made it fresh and more contemporary. Now for this particular pattern, how it works is you start off on double pointed needles. Whoops, I dropped that, let me pick it up. You start out on double pointed needles and you cast on eight stitches. And so the first two rows are the fiddly bit because you gotta make sure that you don't twist your stitches. But after that, it really goes pretty, it really goes pretty quick. And once you get to the third color, which um, let me show you here, you're working on double pointed needles for the first two colors. And then when you get to the third color, you can switch to circular needles like this. Then you have enough, you have enough colors on there that you can switch to the circular needles. And that's when it goes by really fast when you don't have to deal with those double pointed. But it's a nice mindless pattern. It's easy to memorize because you're just, um, oop, I, I see a mistake in my pattern. Uh oh. But it's really easy to, uh, I can't believe I saw that because now I'm just gonna have to rip this whole thing back all the way to there because see what I did? I didn't purl those two stitches. Actually, what I'll do is just, I'll just rip all the way back to those instead of ripping this all out. Ah, <laughs> I hate when that happens. That is so frustrating. Anyway, that's how that goes. When I have, I'm hoping to get 20 squares out of all the yarn that I have, which will make it a four by five. And given the size of those squares, which as you saw was pretty big, I think it will make a, at least um, a blanket for a twin, or you can probably use it like, you know, put it on the back of the couch to keep you warm kind of thing. And when it is all sewn up, uh, what I will do is I will take an iron to it and give it a good steam. In other words, I'm going to kill the yarn. It only makes it look better and it gives it a nice drape. So that's another project. That project's gone pretty fast. I'm, I challenged myself to do a square a day and I've actually been making at least two. Let's see, I started this last weekend and I already have 12 squares. So that tells you how fast it goes by. I mean, it's really easy to um, knit a square a day. I mean, that's a very reasonable um, expectation on that project. So my next project that I want to show you is a sweater that I started last year and then put to the side because shiny object syndrome. Um, there was some other project grabbed my attention and having knitted 14 sweaters last year, well I knitted 13 and crocheted one, but after having do, done that last year I was all ready to switch to some home deck projects. 
Um, so I was started this. It's a cable rib sweater. I have a front and the back started so far. And it's my own design, so I'm not following any pattern. And what happened and why I was easily distracted on it is I didn't know what kind of neckline to use for this sweater. Originally, I was going to do a turtleneck because I hate, you know, when your neck is cold, the rest of me is just cold. I mean, you're just uncomfortable. So I thought, well, I'll make a turtleneck. But then I thought if I made it a V-neck, which is really the most flattering silhouette or neckline for me, if I make it a V-neck, then I can wear my um, denim button-down shirt with underneath it so anyway I'm still trying to figure it out I think I think it's going to be a v-neck and when I do then all I'll have to do is finish off the front and the back which will be really easy and quick and then just knit up the sleeve so I really don't have a whole lot left to do on this project the problem is I have not looked at it for a while so it's going to take me some time to reacquaint myself with the pattern and then I'm going to have to figure out how to do you know the decreasing for the neckline and all this sort of stuff and quite truthfully I just don't <laughs> that sounds like work right now and I just don't feel like doing it I would like to talk about the yarn for this project which is a cotton yarn and I unraveled it from a thrift store sweater and actually, a lot of yarn in my stash is from the thrift store, either other people's leftovers or sweaters that I've unraveled. And I think there is at least one Ravelry group devoted to repurposing yarn. Now, my secret is to buy men's sweaters. First of all, the amount of yarn you get for the price is unbelievable because men's sweaters are larger. So bigger sweaters mean more yarn. I think the most that I've ever spent for a sweater was $8. I mean, it's hard to find a decent skein of yarn for $8, and I'm getting a whole sweater's worth, you know. So this is really a good deal. And then men's sweaters also tend to be plain, so they're easier to unravel. And I only like to buy natural fibers now. I mean, I have yarn in my stash that is not natural, natural fibers. But now, moving forward, I only want to work with natural fibers. And a lot of men's sweaters are made from natural fibers versus women's sweaters, which tend to be acrylic and they have decorations on them and all that sort of thing. So it's just a better bargain and an easier process when you buy men's sweaters. Now, it does take some work to unravel them. You have to rip out the seams. Um, there's some parts that I end up just cutting because I can't find ends. And so there is a little bit of waste, but you know me, I have my scrap bag and I just throw that all in the scrap bag and it will become part, it will become stuffing for something. So nothing goes to waste. And then I do have a ball winder. So once I get to the point where I can easily unravel it, I just hook it up to the ball winder and within a minute or two, I got a whole thing of yarn. So it's a win for the environment because I'm reusing, reusing a resource rather than it going to the landfill. And it's a win for my wallet, you know. Um, maybe that's why I have such a big stash because I do buy a lot of <laughs> thrifted sweaters. So, oh well. What can I say? I don't mind. I think I'm getting good value for my money. But that's what's going on with that sweater. And then I have another sweater that I've also am designing. And it is going to be a raglan tank top. The problem with this is I only have three skeins of this yarn, which I love the color. I believe it's called Ming Blue. And it the yarn is Luster Sheen by Coates and Clark. Now, I don't even know if they make this yarn anymore. But... I've had, I have several colors of it. Um, last year, I crocheted a sweater from a beautiful seafoam green. And I also have a gorgeous red in my stash of this yarn. Luckily, I have tons of that to make something fun. But this, I only have three skeins. So I'm hoping to get a tank top out of it. And I'm just at the part, I'm, I'm short-waisted, so there, there's... 
So from my armhole to my waist is not a huge distance. So I'm about at the point where I would be binding off for my armhole. And since this is a raglan top, really it's just going to be a straight angle from the armhole to my neckband. And I'm hoping because obviously you're decreasing the amount of yarn you're using. So I'm hoping that that won't take more than a half a ball of yarn. And so then that other yarn and a half skeins I have left will be able to make the back. But however, if I don't have enough, um, you know, that's all the more challenge to my creativity. So we'll see what happens. And also it has this beautiful lace and cable pattern there which I, I think is really pretty. But I, I think if it comes out the way it looks in my head, that it's going to be a really pretty um, little tank top to wear with shorts or a skirt. And as I said before, I just love this color. This is, this is just such a good color for me. Now the final project I want to show you is this crocheted tablecloth. I started this about a year and a half ago. And part of the reason I wanted to make this was just to see if I can. And also because I had this giant <laughs> cone of crochet thread. I mean, look at how much I've, I've crocheted of this and look at how much I still have left. It was huge. And it still is pretty darn huge. I don't know what I'm going to make with the rest of that, but I'm sure I'll find something fun. Anyway. The pattern is from Magic Crochet, and it is filet crochet. And other than trying to read the, chiny, the tiny chart, because Magic Crochet relies heavily on using charts, um, other than trying to read that, um, it's a really easy pattern. It's nothing but um, slip stitch, single, um, double crochet, and chain stitch. Um, and you know, when I first started it, I was making really good progress on it, but then, you know, something shiny once again, <laughs> grabbed my attention and I put it aside and it wasn't until the end of last year when I started working on my, on my home deck projects that I pulled this out again and thought, you know, I really should finish this. I'm not that far. And I really have about 10 more rows to do. Um, but if you look at the size of it, it's a lot of rows. It's worked in the round. And it consists of these 12, if you can see this here, these 12 wedge shapes make up the pattern. And it has this really pretty flower. And those of people who know me know I love flowers. So it has this really pretty flower at the end of it. And um, I think it's going to be really pretty when it's done. I'm, I'm just really pleased with this project and, and um, how it's turning out. And once the pandemic is done, or we can gather again, I'm going to be entertaining more. Now, I still need to get a dining room table and chairs. And I'll share the details of that project with you when it happens, because I'm not going the conventional route. I mean, I'm using a dining room table and chairs. but um, but I'm going to kind of mix it up a bit. And where I'm going to put it right now is where my sewing machine is. So I've come up with a whole new plan of rearranging my apartment so that I can fit the table and chairs in there and not have it looked cramped. And um, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. But my, my whole point in this, uh, of this is that part of the fun of entertaining for me is dressing up the table. And even though I plan on getting a rectangular table, I see no reason why I can't use the circular tablecloth on there. I think it will, I think it will um, kind of be a fun contemporary um, way to use it. So I have all these ideas in my head. We'll see how they all turn out. 
So that's all the projects that I'm working on right now. And I would love to hear about the projects that you're working on. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share with your friends. And if you want to follow me on my journey, hit subscribe and the bell to receive notifications when a new video is up. You can also follow along on my blog, my blog, <laughs> blog. You can also follow along on my blog. Links are down below. Happy destashing and see you in the next one.